were now joining us is uh, Oji Okpe with stories trending around the world. Genex, Good Oji morning, Doctor. You got that right. The lady in cobalt blue. How are you? <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> good job, yes, Dr. Yes, Matt. Good yes, job. Good to have you. Thank you. Good morning, Tundu. Good morning. The lady in pink. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Mr. Vinny said it is rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Good morning, Rafai. Good morning, Oji. How are you? I mean, I never knew you were a Chelsea fan. You just proved it. And thank you so much. God bless you. For joining Chelsea. In the sure. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United Kingdom, Buckingham Palace has revealed details of celebrations to mark Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee next June. The Queen is set to make history as the first British monarch to celebrate a Platinum Jubilee, marking 70 years of service and her ascendance to the throne. In the United States, the removal of former President Donald Trump's blog page, which was launched last month in the wake of the ban by major social media platforms, tops the trend. In Mali, reactions trail the African Union's suspension of the country's membership in response to last week's military coup and threatened sanctions. The country, which has also been suspended by the West African regional bloc, ECOWAS, is being cautioned to restore its leadership to civilian rule. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, thousands of families displaced by a volcanic eruption last month are finding safety in neighboring Rwanda. In Tanzania, female members of parliament are demanding an apology on behalf of Condesta Sichiwale, who was ordered to leave the parliament for wearing tight-fitting trousers. The incident, which has caused outrage on social media, has been described as discriminatory against women. In Nigeria, former Senator Dino Melaye is seen in a now viral video tackling President Muhammad Buhari in the wake of Twitter deleting the president's tweet in which he issued threats against those he accused of destroying the country. You are the source of our problem. You are the source of our problem. Papa Buhari, you are the source of our problem. Papa Kubu, you are the source of our problem. Under sports, around 10,000 volunteers who signed up to help at the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games quit on Wednesday, blaming organizers for their decision. The Tokyo Olympics were postponed last year due to the coronavirus pandemic and are due to start on July 23rd. Finally, under entertainment, two-time Oscar winner Jodie Foster is set to receive a Lifetime Palm d'Or Achievement Award on the opening night of the 74th Cannes Film Festival, scheduled to hold on July 6th. Well, let's begin what's trending in Nigeria with reactions to microblogging platform Twitter deleting President Muhammad Buhari's tweet on Wednesday in which he issued threats to troublemakers in the country while referencing the Nigerian Civil War. While many Nigerians lauded the move, the Minister for Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, accused the blogging platform of double standards and described their presence in the country as suspicious. Let's take a look. The mission of Twitter in Nigeria is very, very suspect. As, to, as Twitter deleted the violent tweets that Inamidikano has been sending, has it? Has it? The same Twitter during the NSAS program that was funding NSAS protesters was the first to withdraw, to, to close the account of a former president of a US, Trump. And you see, when people were burning police stations and killing policemen in Nigeria during NSAS, for Twitter, it was about the right to protest. But when a similar thing happened on the Capitol, it became insurrection. You see, we are not going to be, we are not going to be uh, uh, fooled by anybody. We have a country to rule, and we'll do so to the best of our ability. 
to which that mentioned in Nigeria, give, citing those two examples is very suspect. What is the agenda? Rufai, what is Twitter's agenda? This is from the minister. Oji, if you ask me now, who I go ask? <laughs> Truth has to be said. Yeah. You see, this is a point in time where we need to de-escalate things. And I'm not happy with what the minister has said. Because it's so easy for the minister to say Twitter has an agenda in Nigeria. What's the agenda? But this was the same minister that when Twitter went to Ghana, he said that's what Nigerians get for demarketing their country on Twitter. So all of a sudden, now he says Twitter has an agenda. Secondly, he said Nigerians were demarketing their country on Twitter. This is not the way forward. A point in time like this in a nation, we should look for remedy to douse the tension. And please, I want people watching us to go and Google Nelson Mandela's speech after the death of Chris Honey. What the president said, let's call his speed his speed, is not what should be said by the father of a nation at a time like this. Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's go and Google what Nelson Mandela said after Chris Hani died. When Chris Hani died in 1993, that event could have thrown South Africa into a civil war. But Mandela kept on saying that we South Africans need to come together despite the hurts. At a time like this in a nation like this, where we know that there are discordant tunes, people are hurt, people are being killed, this is not the time to say that. As a president, you can say we'll deal decisively with criminals in general. You could have mentioned them. We will make sure that peace returns to the Southeast, but not saying that we'll treat them in a language you understand that you make reference to the civil war. The civil war is not a good thing that happened in this country. Nobody enjoys it when they remember it. In fact, when we remember the civil war, we say this shouldn't have happened in the first place. So please, Leaders, this is the time to calm things down. Tell Nigerians that they are united, that they are one. This is not the time to bring discordant tools among Nigerians. This is not the time to fight Twitter. If right. the minister feels angry about what Twitter, he can go and peel. You know, there's another slant to this. We'll take a tweet from a Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, who wrote, uh, we urge President Mohammed Buhari to caution Mr. Lai Mohammed for reportedly accusing Twitter of double standards over reported deletion of the president's tweets will sue the Nigerian government if it uses the deletion as a pretext to restrict Nigerians' access to Twitter in the country. Do you see the possibility of that in any way? I, it's entirely possible, but that would be highly regrettable. It would be such a shameful, disgraceful thing to do. So I really hope that that was not even in the contemplation of the minister when he was talking. I hope that his comments were restricted to this issue alone and that none of those plans are foot. We, this is not Myanmar. I'm sorry. That cannot even happen. Happen. But I want to just comment on what Alaji Lai Mohammed said in the soundbite that you shared about Twitter having a particular agenda with Nigeria. No, because Twitter has deleted tweets from, you know, COVID sort of inf the infodemic and say mass propaganda, your tweets will be deleted. And say vaccine propaganda, your tweets will be deleted. Festus Kayamo had that happen to him when he posted screenshots, for example. Those were deleted. So it's not anything exclusive to the Nigerian government. You left out very important Donald Trump. I, I was coming oh, to okay, him. Good. He was a repeat violator. Yes. So his accounts actually got suspended entirely. He was banned from Twitter. So it's got nothing to do with Nigeria. Jair Bolsonaro also fell foul. So it's, it's nothing to do with President Buhari. It's about the the kind of feeling that that statement incited. It's deemed by some as hate speech. And the uh, minister is correct that the president has freedom of expression. But freedom of expression is not unqualified. There are limits to your freedom of expression, whereby you will be cautioned and the tweet has been deleted. I think it's embarrassing for us as Nigerians that our president has been reprimanded by Twitter in this fashion. Well said, Dr. Abati, your analysis. Well, <clears throat> first, let me address the first question you raised. Yes. We've seen examples in some of our countries where, you know, um, social media platforms are banned. Last year, India banned 200 Chinese apps on social media, including TikTok. The same India, uh, last month, came up with new rules 
uh, you know, uh, li limiting the space for WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter when uh, India came up with the uh, privacy rules. And of course, uh, this month, or in May also, you know, uh, WhatsApp decided to go to court to challenge uh, the Indian government over attempts by the Indian government to restrict, to constrict the space uh, for social media expression in India. So the question is, would Nigeria follow the same road? The same Nigeria that has been complaining about the abuse of the social media, but I think uh, it will not be the, in the best interest of the Nigerian government to do anything that will result in the constriction of the civic space on social media. And so when uh, Social Economic Responsibility and Accountability Project, popularly known as SERA, say that uh, you know, they will go to court if the Nigerian government goes in that direction, uh, then they will be following the full steps of uh, WhatsApp uh, in India uh, that is challenging the government of India in court about complaints by the government of uh, India about manipulative media. That was what the uh, Indian government was complaining about. And they were saying uh, that uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter have been putting out uh, misinformation about uh, Narendra Modi's uh, government's uh, management of uh, COVID-19. So you have a precedence, uh, you know, a strong one in that regard. Second, I said earlier that <coughs> I, I'm not too happy uh, that we have now reached a point where the Minister of Information will come out publicly uh, to compare President Mohamed Buhari with uh, Nnam de Kanu, yes. who in the rating of the government of Nigeria is uh, a fugitive uh, from the law. And yet over uh, tweets, you now have uh, uh, the Minister of Information saying, oh, uh, you didn't uh, ban, uh, uh, you didn't restrict uh, Nnam de Kanu, so is it the president of Nigeria that you will restrict? I think that the comparison is a sign of desperation and perhaps also frustration. However, I've made a point that what is available, the option that is available uh, to uh, the government of Nigeria or the minister or the president himself is to appeal to Twitter. What Twitter is enforcing is its community standard, its community rules, and it's a whole range about hate speech, about uh, copyright violations, about uh, sexual molestation using the platform. And I think those standards are important, considering what we have seen in terms of how the social media can be abused to cause may mayhem. We saw it in New Zealand. We have seen it also in parts of uh, uh, the United States. But the option of banning Twitter or saying uh, the Nigerian government will uh, intimidate Twitter, I, I don't think that's an option that anybody uh, should consider. People should just learn to abide by the community rules, whether they are presidents or not. Perfect. And we've cited a, a number of examples. The one you left out is Rudy Giuliani, um, <laughs> former yeah. mayor, mayor of uh, New, New York, York. Yeah. and Nicolas uh, Maduro of, uh, of Venezuela, Venezuela, in addition to Trump, who has been mentioned, and Herr Bolsonaro of Brazil. All of these leaders who have been notorious in abusing uh, the public space. Very well now said, Dr. Kano's Abati. And Facebook account was um, blocked. Was At one point, yes. yeah. All right, we'll take another story. Following the rising spate of crime in River State, the governor of the state, Yisam Wike, in a now viral video, threatened to carry out extrajudicial killings on criminals in the state. Let's take a look. All of you, come back. Who are you? Then today, 2nd of June 2021, I repent. If you don't repent, the period has come. You will die. Your parents will not bury you. We will bury you like vulture. Either your hand will be cut off, or they will blow your head off. Your parents will not even know that you are dead. They will say, oh, their son went to look for money. Which money? The man is gone. And you know, we will not tell your parents that you are gone. Who we'll tell them? Because an armed robber has no business for us to say he has parents. No. No armed robber has parents. No armed robber. So, Nobody should, because of what you are doing, Aruda, challenging people, destroying people, killing them. You go to the Yubo, you go here, you go to the water, bomb killing, killing people, and you think you will go free. You will never, never go free. Tundra, I thought uh, Governor Wike was a lawyer and his wife is uh, High Court George. I would think that he would know that criminals are to be apprehended and n he shouldn't be saying things like this and you know, threatening to carry out extrajudicial killings in that manner? I'm confused. 
Summary execution has no place in any modern society. It's completely barbaric. There is a process. And you're right, he has a legal background, so he should be a, what do they call lawyers now? An officer in the temple of justice. justice. So he should know that there's a system, presumption of innocence. You have to be taken through the process, tried convicted, and then you can serve your sentence. But I do, I didn't know he had links with the TIV um, ethnicity. He looks really nice in that his TIV gets up there. <laughs> Other than that, he, he looks great, but what he had to say is completely appalling. Shocking, yes. Dr. Abati, what was that? Well, I mean, the point has been made, I mean, he made the point that criminals will not go unpunished. But the only way you can punish criminals is through due process. And that process is already uh, cast in stone in law. So it's surprising that an officer in the Temple of Justice, as it should be, uh, is talking about uh, extrajudicial killing. Uh, you know, we are in a democracy, but unfortunately, uh, many of these are leaders. They have a military mentality. And what he was putting across there is a military uh, mentality. It was sounding dictatorial. And I think he should go back to his uh, law books. You know, I hope uh, you know, he still has them so that he would uh, remind himself of what he was taught in school and what he has experienced also as a lawyer when he used to practice. Yes, he was wearing a TV uh, traditional attire there. And I, when I saw that, you know, TV uh, white and black, you know, I thought maybe uh, he was in uh, somewhere in Benue State and that this is supposed to be a dress rehearsal uh, <laughs> for some future ambition. So I don't know, at the level of signaling, uh, only God knows. Maybe yeah. he's preparing to be president. Maybe tomorrow he will wear you know, uh, some other attire, you probably will show up in, uh, in Yoruba attire yeah. or an attire from another part of the country just to tell people that it's everywhere. But you should not make provocative statements uh, that betray his background and training and experience as a lawyer. Well said. Rufai, your analysis on the story. I mean, Oji, we all know that criminals should go to court. They should have their day in court. But the question is, why are the courts not working? Because of the juice on the strike. When you look at Nigeria, multi-layered problems, and that's why we need multi-layered solutions. There are lots of people that have been put in jail or they're having their time in court that they can't even go to court and observe the court process because it's multi-layered. And the governor comes out to say, okay, we'll kill criminals in a country where you have laws and you have a constitution. We, we can't be better than this as a nation. You see, I'd always say this. If we get leadership rights, huh? Oji, I bet on this country, in the next 15 years, Nigeria can be a superpower. I'm not saying African champion, superpower. Yes, we have the capability. Superpower. We have what it takes. And that's why I always bet on Nigeria. I mean, superpower with over a $1 trillion economy, if we just get leadership right. If we get leadership, you know, that will come to the public speak and talk properly. You know, not, we'll destroy, we'll kill, we'll... No, 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 no. If we can just get it right. Leadership, 15 years, superpower, will grow 10% year on year, year on year, will be a one trillion dollar economy. Very well said, Rufai. I just hope we get it right. Very well said. Well, thank you guys. That's all I have for you guys on What's Trending Today. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, thank, thank you very you, much, Jenex. Okay. Uh,